Hiya, my name's Charlie and welcome to my channel and welcome to my lovely guest. <laughs> Charlie. Charlie. Again. It's Charlie and Charlie. Charlie are finally recording a video together for the first time since before the Women's Prize. And honestly, it just feels like we're heading towards the end of the year now. <laughs> Oh yeah, because it's like, that's what happens. It's like, <laughs> this is like the beginning of the end. <laughs> this is the beginning of the end for the Charlies. <laughs> and maybe it might literally be when we talk about some of the things we're going to talk about. Perhaps, maybe. I wouldn't like to speculate. Because what we're going to do is, initially, before we get into it, obviously this is the mid-year recap, but before we get into it, we're going to kind of do a little mini reflection of like last year's video and sort of... Yeah, it's, I've kind of blocked that video from my memory, if I'm being quite honest. It was uh, literally the second video we ever filmed together. It, oh, it was only the second. I thought it was the first. Okay. Booker was the first. That was the oh, second. Booker was the first. That would make sense. Yeah. Kind of written some notes down from last year's questions. So um, we, what, we've got books we wanted to read last year. And out of the books we wanted to read last year... Um, your book you said about, do you remember what it was? I can't remember any of the things that I said. I meant to go. I've written the notes. It's fine. Oh, I've written right, notes. Right. So um, you you said you wanted to read The Way We Live Now by Anthony Trollope. You were going to be buddy reading it with Emily. I did do that. I think that if I remember rightly, I think I preferred it. Um, I think I liked it more than Emily liked it. Um, but. It was definitely a slog of a book, and I was glad that we took the two months to read that one because, my goodness. Yeah. That was crazy. Um, as well, so well done. That's a good tip. That's a tip, good tip for the beginning of it. Yeah, we, we got through the near 900 page tome. Well done. Um, mine, I had a pile of six. It was the TBR tackle from um, Kieran's TBR tackle thing. Yes, I can recall this and, now. Um, looking back on it, I think, I think it was those three DNFs that I saw. Um, and that was, so it was the known world I recently did F. Maggie O'Farrell, um, one of hers. And um, it was the one that you did think I would not like. It was the Anne Patchett. Commonwealth. Commonwealth. And on paper, I should have liked that, but I just wasn't for any no, reason. No, I, I just didn't like that book when I read it years ago. And I've since spoken to the volunteer who also reads quite a lot. And she says with Anne Patchett, um, or maybe it was Anne Tyler. Maybe it's just a thing about people called Anne. I don't know. You're um, not saying that because I'm sure that we've got lots of Anne's around. So if you have, oh, sorry, I'm not trying to offend you, Anne. Uh, but either way, Anne Patchett, uh, yeah, she said that earlier stuff is much better than things she's been releasing recently. But I loved The Dutch House, like I said, so that was like... Oh, gosh, no, I hated that book. I literally loved it. Maybe it's just me and Anne Patchett. Maybe we're just never going to get along. Maybe we're just going to have a cage fight at some point. Watch this space for future future us Charlies <laughs> will watch this space. Um, and then another one, so we, we've got an anticipated releases for us. Um, so my anticipated release last year was Silverborn and Charlie Broke My Heart on Camera. I, I could break it even further. Well, we, we've talked we are about going it. to. We're going to talk about that later. Um, yeah, I, I can't believe what's going on with that book, but yeah, we've talked we'll talk about, about that. Already, that's yeah. going to be talk that's going to be there's, there's an, this is going to appear in one of the questions right um, so then also you so yours was all about evie did you end up reading it i read it as soon as i got it i love that book that is like the first chapter of that book has a scene in it and I, I i read however much i read then i took sally for a walk and i was walking around macclesfield forest recalling that scene and just laughing to myself if anybody saw me they would have they thought I'd be, i was going through some sort of episode because i was just remembering that and chuckling so yeah that's i read it's <laughs> really really good i love it when books do that so then we'll go on to we said so there was two new releases that we kind of that was on here and um yours was shall we, actually i'll say mine first and then we'll say yours mine was you've got a friend in 10a which I did read, I saw so I buddy read this with Alice, Alice in the Giant Bookshelf. And yeah. there were and some said, it's a short story <laughs> collection. There were some short stories that I did enjoy, but there were some that I didn't enjoy, and I was like, oh my god. So yeah, it did sort of make me question some things. And then yours. What was yours, Charlie? I can't remember. Yes, you can. I can't actually. It's the big GC. I knew you were going to see that. Uh, yeah, Gemma Collins' autobiography. I just um, <laughs> I didn't get on with it. 
Uh, what can I say? I could tell it been uh, written by somebody else. So yeah, um, me and Gemma Collins just aren't going to get with each other. That's all I can say. <laughs> Gemma Collins it was great circle and I'm okay. going to play the, what the clip that I'm going to put it on, on screen so if I don't we have a problem yeah we'll have a massive that'll be it our friendship will be <laughs> over if you, like, if you don't like the great circle that's it <laughs> um, just... I, I didn't know that it was um so tenuous <laughs> <laughs> so, short short thread keeping this friend <laughs> Right, I was, you know, like this book might be coming up later on in this video is all I can say. But um, we did say that if I did not like this book, that our friendship would be over. So uh, I think we should let people know that we are now sworn enemies and that this video is purely being put together. Yeah, you know, it's... Yeah, yeah. we're like the cheater girls now. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, she's Raymond Simone heading off on her own. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. Um, right, so that was the reflection on last year. So get, now should we get on to this year's questions? Okay. Yes, that sounds like a good idea. Let's leave the past in the past. But it's nice to have a little reflection. I always like doing that little touch base from last year. So the first question is, how many books have you read so far this year? Uh, as of last night, 71. How about you? I feel okay. like it's gonna... Yeah. I, I feel like your number's going to be much higher than that. Yeah, but bear in mind, I've actually started logging picture books, and obviously I do poetry oh. books as well. Oh my goodness, I wish I did that. Go on. <laughs> no, it's because, like, I want to... Obviously, I'm like for the library. I'm reading short story, uh, like picture books, and also I actually now actually I really like looking at a picture book. I am not ashamed. So, um, I like finding some good ones. Like, so, yeah. So that's this includes that number. So my it's a hundred and eight. So I think probably about maybe twenty of those are, are picture books. I'm guessing. I know that I've only looked at one picture book this year because I sent you a message about it, and that was Frocodile. Crocodile. Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah. Basically, it's a croc young crocodile who finds a dress in the woods and he starts putting on this frock and these high heels and then one day he gets caught and these people say they're going to blackmail him uh, and tell his father about it and his father's this really big butch biker crocodile and he's so worried about upsetting his father that he chooses that he's going to put on a show at the weekend and gets trained by a frog to put on a really fantastic show um, and then there's a nice little heartwarming ending there. Oh, that's lovely. I want. I do. I genuinely want to read that. I recently read one, which I put on my um, Instagram stories, which you probably would have seen. And um, and it's such a gorgeous one. I want to actually buy this. And it's the star the, the Starling Song by um, Oct Octavie Walters. I'll put a picture on screen. Yeah, somewhere. So flipping gorgeous. It kind of gives me, if you liked The Lost Words by Robert McFarland and Jackie Morris, it kind of really gives me those vibes. It's just, yeah, it's just such a wonderful, like, it's a, it's a lovely message as well. There's some really great illustrators. So yeah, we, we, we promote the, the picture books on this channel. So yeah. We do. Um, so, a new release you haven't read yet, but want to. Okay, uh, so for this, I went with the... Oh, it's not going to show up on screen, Charlie. Oh, there we go. Uh, for this, I went with The Secrets of Hartwood Hall by Katie Lumsden, because uh, as much as I thoroughly want to support Katie, this feels like an autumnal book to me, and it feels like I have a very specific date in mind that I want to read this book on, <laughs> because I feel like it's the perfect book to read on an autumnal day when it's throwing it down with rain outside. I mean, to be fair, I could have done that this week um, because it's hearkening back to Gothic literature from what I've read of the blurb and being reminded of Diane Setterfield. And so in my head, I just feel like this is a September the 19th book. <laughs> but we actually have a plan for this book. We do, and uh, you will... To learn more about that in due course. In the next week or so, I think we'll put, have a little announcement out potentially. 
So yeah. watch this space. Yeah. Um, and mine, I've got two because I'm Charlie and I'm extra. Oh, well, that would make sense, yes. <laughs> um, I've got Family Law by Elizabeth Acevedo. And this is on my NetGalley. The whole reason I actually got NetGalley was because Charlie was like, Ch you spotted it on there, didn't you? Yeah, um, and now we don't have it. <laughs> yeah, and so... Like, I love Elizabeth Acevedo's writing. I've read all of the, her published books so far. This one is her first adult novel, and I cannot wait to read it. And it's, even though it is on my... second? Sorry? <laughs> no, I was just saying, I, I didn't know you'd not finished. I was just going to say, what was the second book? Oh, said. yeah, the second book is The Land of Milk and Honey by C. Pam Zhang. And they wrote um, the How Much of These Hills is Gold. I think that was Booker. Yes. Yes. I don't know when it was released, but yeah, I'm excited to read that as well. And potentially, like I said, that could be Booker, Booker listed, which I'm hoping, I'm hoping that it, that it is, even though it's not out till September. Okay. So basically, we've realised that um, we I sent these questions to Charlie yesterday and there was a bit of an error there. So Charlie has given you the anticipated release for the second half of the year that she hasn't read yet, but want to. So now I'm going <laughs> to give mine, which is Normal Rules Don't Apply by Kate Atkinson. I was... Um, ferreting around last night trying to find books that came out or that are coming out in the latter half of the year and I found another one but because I'm going to mention that author already I've chosen to go with this one which is a collection of short stories that's coming out at the end of August and as I've been on a bit of a Kate Atkinson thing this year uh, I thought yeah although I I think that I'm probably going to get this collection from the library because it's $16.99 currently in a pre-order sale. Otherwise, it's £20 and it's only 240 pages. And as nice as the limited edition hardcover books, I'm not forking out that for a book. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is our biggest disappointment of the year. And I feel like we can all guess what mine is going to be. Since we've mentioned it already, it's Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead. I will put this book down because it's not showing up properly. I really wanted to like this book. I have been saying for nearly two years that this is going to be a new favourite. It's sat on my shelf and I have been saving it for a rainy day because I was so certain that this was going to be a book that I adored. I was going to do this whole video, this pink reading vlog where I read all these books that were going to be fantastic pink reads because I just read some fantastic yellow books and I just did not like it. I think that it had become one of those that because so many people had liked it, I had developed this idea of what it was going to read like. And then it, so if I'd known the style of writing that it was, I probably could have been like, oh, I'll save it for that sort of mood then. But because I expected it to be this really grand literary quality and the writing to be on a par with some of my favourite writers, I think that I'd really, it, I don't think it could have ever lived up to the expectations I had, but I didn't expect to hate it as you much as I did. You really had a react. You had like a... I did, like, the yeah. idea of picking it up made me angry. The storyline, as I've said to you and I keep mentioning, I just, I found that everything about it really generic. And when I was reading it, I felt very much like this could just be a drama series on Channel 5. It just um, didn't appeal to me at all. And I found it very much like a summer beach read for fans of Taylor Jenkins Reid. And yeah, I just um, don't want to talk about it anymore because every time I talk about it, I just want to denigrate it. I do not like this book. I've got the audio book to try and listen to it. I ended up reading a whole spoiler thing to find out whether it was something that I'd want to read, and it wasn't. So, I still yeah. love this book. I need to reread this book. I actually was saying to Charlie, I was like, oh, I might just reread this book because we had our Charlie challenge, and that, but yeah, I, have, I haven't actually done that. But yeah, uh, yeah but you you will reread it and you will hate it. No, I won't. I will love it because it's got like <laughs> to me. I've got this connection to it because of the planes. I heard my dad, so like to me, like that's obviously like I feel like the um, yeah. All, all of the historical element, I really, I, I mean, I, I did like the uh, modern day element, but I particularly had like a real strong connection. Yeah, that, that was something you said to me. You thought that I would enjoy the historical yeah, aspect. you didn't. It was the other way around. Um, yeah, I found that the modern voice was more, um, not fluid. I can't think of the word that I'm looking for right now, but it was 
easier to get through than the voice that was used in the historical fiction. Harry and Graves' voice. Yeah. And, yeah, such a disappointment. Anyway, what book disappointed you? I mean, I've got a few because I'm Charlie again. Yeah. <laughs> this is where me. So, right, the biggest disappointment I'm going to actually say is Silverborn because, yet again, by Jessica Townsend, even though it's not, I haven't read this book, this book is now not out till November 2024, which is horrific. We've been waiting yeah. two years for this book. I know that Jessica Townsend might be really poorly, so I'm really sorry if I'm being, I'm not feeling horrible and I feel really bad for her, but I'm so, I, was, I love her work. Her, her, her middle grade, this is a middle grade series for those of you that don't know. Um, and we follow Morrigan Crow and it's kind of this magical story. Yeah. yeah, and but we've been waiting. So how many years have we been waiting? When did the third book came out? I feel like, was it Holopox, the most recent one? Because I still haven't listened to that. I, this was a series that I found worked best for me as an audio book. Lots of people have said that, actually, so I might re-listen to um, it. And what is, it's, it's, to, it's to do with the narrators, it's to do with the music that they've got. There's just, it's just a completely different experience than it was when I was trying to read it. When I tried to read it, I found it a bit, um, not bland, but I just couldn't get into it the same way that the narrators brought it to life on the audio book. Um, and, you know... I know that it's not been as long as some people have waited for George R. R. Martin's next book. It's not been as long as somebody's waited for Patrick Rothfuss' next book. But you and I have talked about before, in terms of marketing, the it's a middle grade series. And I feel like a lot of the original readers will have aged out of the series by the time the next book comes out. And I don't know. I personally didn't have this great attachment to the series anyway, but when the author has so many plans for the series and for how many books she wants to release, it does seem like a really long wait. Yeah, it's just like, it's just, it's just so disappointing. But yeah, that, I, I feel like, like a good reason. Dis- but I also feel like I can't speak on it as somebody who took three years to release a book in a series and due to the way things have gone, it's going to be at least four years between my first and second book in the Cozy Crime series. So I can as I, I can understand these things, is all I'm saying. You know, I can I, I can, can understand how these things happen. Um, not just in terms of everything that went on in 2020, but in terms of sometimes life and other things get in the way of the actual writing. And you know, I can I can empathize and understand everything that's going on, but it doesn't stop this from being a personal disappointment. And the other two books that I'll just briefly touch on that were kind of disappointments <laughs> for little, I'll just briefly say Miss Aldridge Regrets by Louise Hare, mainly because I um she uh, she wrote, she's the author of This Lovely City, and I just loved that book so much. It was kind of this mystery, which I guess obviously Miss, Miss Aldridge Regrets is on a similar line, but I think it's because, yeah, I just, I was, yeah, it just didn't work for me. I, I didn't have to. You were looking forward to this one. We talked about it in a video last year. Yeah, we did, uh, yeah. It's so an anticipated release. Yeah, so I can, yeah. When you've been anticipating something, the disappointment. I think that, like, that disappointed me more than the next thing yeah. I'm going to say. So <laughs> you guys have been watching me, I'll check my channel for any length of time. And when the Women's Prize Long List got announced, there was a book on there called Cursed Bread by Sophie McIntosh. And it's my fault for looking up the premise because I feel like, which maybe I will not do that for the book I went because we've got the book like literally imminently. Yes. Um, because yeah, when I did, the premise sold it to be this kind of mystery in this town. And it was, I thought it was going to be more about this mystery, but the book isn't her yeah, spread. The, 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 way, the way that that's written, sorry, go on. No, you go on, you go. All I was going to say was in agreement with you that from what I remember of the synopsis, it makes out like it is going to be um, one of the, you know, like the, gothic mystery type things that we've read in the past that we've enjoyed so that's why we both of us I think thought that this was going to be one for us because it did seem to have that vibe throughout it misty dark kind of like plot like there was the plot that I was specifically interested in but then you rechristened this book didn't you 
Yes, I did. Boring bread, which I feel like I mean, because apparently Sophie McIntosh is like one of the nicest authors ever. And I just feel I'm going to so say what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a plan. I'm saying it here so that I have to do it. I'm going to make a plan and go back and read her. Is it, what She's got two other books, but the one that really um, interests me is the water one. What's it called? The Water Cure. The Water Cure. That's it. And that's an actual booker listed book. Yeah. And then you'll be back here at the end of the year talking about how you rechristen this one, The Boring Cure. <laughs> No, no, because that would make it, that would mean like it's a cure for boring. No. What would you call it? Mm. The water bore. The water bore. The water bore. Fantastic. See, it writes itself. Okay. Okay, what's your biggest surprise, Charlie? Life After Life by Kate Atkinson. <laughs> uh, and no, it actually is a surprise because. Uh, this is a book that since it came out, I have tried to read multiple times. And I remember saying to you, the furthest I've ever gotten was about page 280 of this edition. And then this year I read, reread Emotionally Weird. And I have just really rekindled my adoration for Kate Atkinson. And so I was reading a few of them and then I decided I wanted to tackle life after life. And this time around... I didn't need all your books to try and get through it. I found myself completely invested in it. And what was really interesting to me was how this felt like everything Kate Atkinson had been trying to do, having looked at her previous books, it felt like she'd achieved it here. And it there was no, it just felt like the stuff that I'd seen in the past where she was just starting out, she'd finally figured out how to do that here. Because if you look at her previous books, there has been this, thing where in human croquet because in life after life it's where time keeps resetting itself every time ursula dies and you go down all these different paths and you see that for the first time in human croquet but i felt like she did it incredibly well here yes i've noticed there are similarities in her books to do with family and all that but i feel like unlike me if you are a fan of kate atkinson have been reading her books over decades then you're not going to notice these recurring scenes and themes and what have you i was reading one every month sometimes two a month so that's I, a nice thing because it makes you have like this like blanket com comfort blanket thing to it but yeah, that's um, a great book, so. so this was a surprise because i never thought that i was going to finish this one and thought it would always be a dna my biggest surprise is not one i have a physical copy of but it's actually trespasses by louise kennedy this is one um, i think i read the first two pages of there's another woman's prize on i read the first like page or two of it and i dnf'd it i hated it and then I re it was the one of the last ones um, on the, I went back to it sort of thing to try it again at the end of the Women's Prize readings. And um, yeah, loved it. My fun of my favourite. Yeah. yeah. For, for me from the, I, I had a different experience because I just loved that book from the beginning. Oh, yeah, you did. Um, I, yeah, I saw all these links to other books in there. I really enjoyed the way it was told. I it it did you know it did, it did all the things that I like. Yeah, um, it's very very. If, if you're looking for a quiet book, it's not got like the plot. I just bear that in mind. So if you're what, it's a very character dread, uh, character driven book, I would say. Yeah. So yeah, just bear that in mind if you want to head into trespasses. Yeah. So. Uh, so next we have favorite new author debut or new to you. You go. And for this, I went with Douglas Adams. Um who wrote The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, so for this, I have to go back to December 2022, when, if you didn't know, I really struggled to watch films, but it's something that I really want to get into, is watching films. And I was just sat there on one internet streaming service, and I saw the film there with Martin Freeman and Zoe Deschanel, and thought, you know what? I'm not doing anything. Let's just watch this. And ended up watching it and <laughs> saying to my parents, I'd like this book for Christmas, please. And so I got this and I read, well, I, I read this and then I've listened to the sequels and it's exactly what I like, which is it's sci-fi light, but it's really humorous and has some cl classic British comedy in there. And then I found out that Douglas Adams had also written the first ever episode of classic Doctor Who that I watched and really enjoyed. So it turns out that um, I had experienced this work before and enjoyed it then, but 
actually reading his books now as well and listening to them has just provided me with an author I feel like I can just keep going back to re-listening to rereading uh, because it just suited my sensibilities. I I've read the first one and I, I loved it so I do it's another one I want to read the second one I need to and also I think I might go back in the, at the beginning and then like if you love the audiobook so much I might do that. Speaking uh, of yeah. classic I would say somewhat classic authors I mean like kind of retro authors and um, I'm gonna say <laughs> Um, Mort by, so I'm going to say Terry Pratchett um, is my answer. I've got two answers. This is me again. Um, well, yeah, so, sorry? I said, I'm just thrilled that Terry Pratchett made it. I freaking, like Jack from Spreadbrook Joy, who is one of my lovely friends on here, I love her so much. And she said, she sent this to me because she said she knew I wanted to try it. And I, again, I listened to it on audiobook and read the first, this, this I listened to and read physically. And it was just the audiobooks of this are amazing. The story is amazing anyway. And yeah, it's, so it's about Mort, who be is, becomes Death's Apprentice. And yeah, I've read two now of the Death series. You've written. Yeah, so yeah. It's, like, it's yeah, so it's much right. fun. If you want like a, a, a escapist kind of comfort reads. What well, Mort was, I'd been listening to, I, I think it was Dane of Dane Reads had been reading and reading the Terry Pratchett books. And I'd only ever read the Truckers Diggers Wings series when I was younger. And so I listened to The Colour of Magic and those ones. I tried the witches books, but it was when I got to Mort that I was like, oh yeah, I get this. This is where, and I, from then on, you know, there are a few duds throughout the entire series, but there's 40 books in the series. Of course that's going to happen. Uh, but it was from Mort onwards when I just re really started to enjoy them. And they've re-recorded all of them. So they're, they're, or they're re currently re-recording all of them. So yeah. Yes, they, they have done quite a lot now. So I'm really excited to make my way slowly through them. And then I'm I can't say my favourite like all new authors without saying this. Obviously, both of these authors I've only read two of, but small yeah, um Caleb Azim and Nelson. I, I read Small World. So I recently read um his other one as of well, um Open Water. And yeah, I just love um Caleb Azima's writing. And he's got a third one coming out in this. Apparently, this is like a loosely like like a trilogy kind of thing. What do they call like, it? Like a triptych. I don't know, they're like companion books as opposed to a proper trilogy yeah. yeah I just loved his writing so yeah they, both those authors are favorites of mine the next question is favorite new character uh for me this is Scott Jericho from Killing Jericho by William Hussey uh simply because this is an incredibly dark grim book and we have a former detective who is a He's gay from a travelling background, but he can also be incredibly violent. And you know from the off that the whole reason he's not a former detective is because of what he did to a murderer. And it's just, you know, you're, this character just has so many different facets about him. He's a book lover, but... And he can he has his sensitivities, but he can also be this incredibly aggressive person. And it's throughout the whole thing, it is almost like the whole classic Jekyll and Hyde thing. Uh, but you're getting to see him struggle with all of these different emotions because the world isn't the way that he wants it to be. And a lot of the time he's able to recognize the way that the law has affected him and how society has affected his background but he's also looking for some sort of order within the universe. He's just this really multifaceted character, and I think that the author did a great job in creating him. So, what's your favourite, then? My favourite bookish character, again, it won't be a surprise to the people that watched my last video, is Muddy from um, Small Joys by... Right. Um, uh, okay. Alvin no. James Mensah. Small Joys is an exploration of masculine friendship, I would say. Okay. And it's just gorgeous. And Muddy is um, a Mancunian. He's, he, it's sort of, because this is book is sort of set in the late 90s, early 2000s sort of kind of time. And here, yeah, he's Mancunian. He loves Oasis. He's a bird watcher. And he's just got the biggest heart. And he's got like, he's just like the most positive person like you'll ever like read about. And he's just so lovely. And he's so protective of his friend because this is about um, a friendship between him and Harley. Um, Harley has got is really battling with his um, mental health, and yeah, it's there's some. This book does have some hard hitting themes, but at the core of it is just this. Yeah, Muddy is just this gorgeous, gorgeous character, and he's just he's my favourite, and I love him so much. I just want to hug him. 
I, I was all with you until you said that he was a fan of Oasis. <gasps> and there's loads of references to like not, like music as well in this, which I like. I really enjoyed as well. So yeah, I just think it's a really good book. Uh, next, we have the book that made you cry. Uh, now, the I've not had a book make me cry um, this year, but a book that made me sad was Fighting Proud by Stephen Bourne, and this is a account of the gay men that fought in the both in both world wars and the reason it makes you sad what well, made me sad is just knowing that these men existed and seeing how they've basically been wiped from history how the noble thing to do so there are trigger warnings in here the noble thing to do was to kill yourself so that you wouldn't bring shame on your family how certain people who were high up in society have been people have questioned whether they've been gay for decades but one of the big things and this annoyed me about jeremy paxman as well was that they said they couldn't possibly have been gay because almost like you couldn't be heroic and you couldn't have this knowledge if you were gay because of the idea that it just meant being um what well, kind of flowery with your head in the clouds and that sort of thing and so just to recognize that even though these people fought in the war it took 60 years for them to get an apology for people denying that they existed and still today from the reading of this book you find that people still don't know that there were gay people fighting in the wars and it's just um an incredibly sad irksome read when you consider the beliefs of people from decades ago and now. I want to read that one. Um, my book that made me cry will appear again. Um, and I read quite, I've actually read quite a few books that have made me cry this year. And it's some, this one made me sob the most. Um, and it's Someday Maybe by Onyi Nabulele. And yeah, again, another kind of plot list book, but character driven. This is about a woman and um, we follow Eve and her husband, has death by suicide and she finds him and it's horrific and she sort of it's she's grief like I said she's she's in, Eve is in her grief the entirety of this book so this might not be a book for everybody but for me I kept something about it I just really connected to her the way she talks about grief and um, yeah I just love this book so much so yeah yeah that, and it made me cry. proper 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 cry. that's definitely one that I want to read but I'm not ready to do so yet because yeah, I adore a book about grief. I don't know whether <laughs> this might be a bit too much for you. I feel like you will feel like this is tugging well, on your heartstrings too much. But I, you know, think, I believe well, the author not... has got experiences. Yeah, I mean, I had, I, I, every single one of my grief experiences into my last book. So me, me and grief have had a lot to be going on with recently. Uh, what book made you happy? I've got so this one leads back to a previous. Um, author I mentioned and it's The Restaurant at the End of the Universe by Douglas Adams and yeah. um, basically all of these books have made me smile in some way I've only listened to, well I've read one and listened to two of them and the reason I chose this one is because Martin Freeman really does a good job with the audiobooks and I just I, I find I this listening to this one I thought when I was reading The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, that listening would be an entirely different experience. And if you've got a good narrator, it could really heighten all of the comedy within it. And that definitely happened with the restaurant at the end of the universe. And I then went and watched the 1980s adaptation of this one. And oh, it just... The adaptation from back then really captures the story incredibly well. And this one actually is one that has a bit more plot than the Hitchhikers did. I'd say that, like I say, they're sci-fi light. And again, there's not really much story going on with them. But I want to listen to them all and read them all before I move on to the classic radio series. Uh, but yeah, these are just humorous books. And I can't help but sing their praises. So what was the book that made you happy? I'm good. I'm going to change my answer. I'm going to say Legends and Lattes, because I was going to say Mort, but I, can't, I don't want to repeat myself. Oh. So I'm going to say Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. This has had loads and loads of hype, and I feel like it yeah. does deserve the hype personally. It's 
It's not like it's the best written novel. It's not like it has amazing, amazing story, but the characters within it are just gorgeous. And it's kind of, it's another comfort kind of hug of a book. And I feel like yeah, I feel like it's one, obviously, as we already know, that, that, that lots of people will like, and it has been one that lots of people like. So if you want a book that's kind of like a hug and not lots of plot again, but um, that has got so much warmth and heart to it, I recommend. It's, it's definitely one that I want to read, but uh, and I saw that the author's got another like um, cosy fantasy novel coming out later this year that involves bookshops in the title, but I can't remember the yeah, second word. I can't remember either, but, um, but um, bookshops and bone dust, isn't it? Or bone dust and bookshops or something like that. It's, I can't remember. I only found out about it last night, but um, last year, you know about the secret project I was writing throughout November, and because I haven't finished that, I'm avoiding reading Legends and Lattes because I um, feel like the book I'm writing is a, a bit in a similar in tone. So. I thought you would actually like Legends and Lattes, actually. I actually do think you would like it because yeah, I, I, it's it's... Yeah, it's just, there's nothing really too, yeah. I would say, nothing too offensive. I feel like about I'm it. Not, going yeah. to enjoy it. I just need to finish finish writing one novel, then I can have a bit of time to focus on the little side project that nobody knows about, and then I can read this book. Uh, so the next one we have is the most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received. Should we both put them up? Because I'm guessing, I don't know what yours is, but. No, I went with a different one. So you go with you show oh, me yours. You go, no, you say. Oh, so um, I went with uh, the Fall of the Argosy by Sebastian de Castel, uh, which only arrived the other day um, because I've been collecting these book, all of de Castel's books in hardcover for about six years now, and I just really like the covers that he gets. Gorgeous. Usually get they usually do them like cards because. Um, these cards are very important to both this series and the Spal Slinger series that came before it. This is a spin-off. And they always have, you know, two characters on the cover. And then I bought this and then found out that he's got another book out next month. That's good. He, 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 well, I, because I had a voucher, I only paid £1.77 for this. Um, but yeah, he is just, he, he's going to have an entire shelf dedicated to him in my room at this rate because he just keeps releasing them so quickly he releases them so fast I don't have the time to get them read um but yeah this was the book I just really really like the covers that he gets my book is Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kinsella you would have all seen and heard about all this this book but I freaking love this book it's so good and I want to, I've listened to it on audio but I want to reread it physically I feel like and um yeah we um, Alice actually Alice actually told me Alice from Alice from the Giant Bookshelf again, um, told me that the um, that the paperback was coming out and she showed me what the cover was and yeah uh, I weren't the, happy about it. So no, the, the paperback cover is awful. It's ugly. I'm sorry if you like the cover, but to me that the paperback cover of um, this book is awful. It's, it's, it's just it's the, the paperback cover just does nothing for the story. It makes it look like something completely different than it, it actually it. is. It cheapens it. Fantastic, fantastic phrasing. That's exactly what it does, yeah. The next question is, what three books would you like to have read by the end of the year? Um, you, you can say yours, Charlie. Okay, so um, I have gone with The Sk Stone Sky by N.K. Jemison. I yep. finally read The List Gate after two and a half years, so decided I want to get to this one. Then I have The Furrows by Namwali Serpel, and this is furthered by something that I read recently, and I saw some there were links in my mind between that and this one is all I can That's say book listed. and then I don't know whether you'll have this one Frozen. on your list but I feel like we both want to read this one by the end of the year and that is My Soul Twin by Nino Harichvili and I think that this is translated by Ruth Martin <laughs> but there we go yeah that is I one. think we read this one didn't we so uh, those are your three. That's so you've seen yeah. one of mine. You've seen one of mine. So that was my yeah. solution. Then I've also got Beloved by um, Tony Morrison. Morris. And this is one like this is on my diverse spines pick this year. And I haven't read any Tony Morrison. Everyone always talks about Tony Morrison, and I definitely want to get to her writing. So yeah, this is a priority. This was like a second-hand library, ex-library edition. 
And I've also got one I've actually started, pick I hadn't planned it, but I actually picked that up this morning. Carla by Colin Walsh. It's getting loads of hype at the moment. Um, I literally Sorry. read one chapter of it. So it's a liter, it's meant, it's it's sort of classed as a literary, liter I can't even say it, you're gonna have to say it. A literary thriller. It's classed yes. as a- It's a difficult, yeah. yes. Literary so, yeah. thriller. And it's when I, uh, Colin Walsh is an Irish novelist and I'm hoping it gets listed for the booker just because it would be nice to have one that I've already read. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so, that, so finally, I have uh, the best book you've read so far in 2023. Mine's going to be quick and easy because everyone's seen it. Should we just get okay, mine and then you can talk about yours? Yeah, let's go for yours then. Someday Maybe by Onyina Bonelli. I've talked about this loads. I'm not going to say anything else. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. And mine might be a surprise to... Carly, I don't know, uh, but it's Thrust. No! I've got something to yeah. talk to you about this. <laughs> okay, so this is a book that now that I've read it, I don't know how you'll feel about it because it's incredibly weird. It's incredibly surreal. And in my latest Wool Gathering video that hasn't gone online yet, I talk about how it's almost like Jeanette Winterson meets David Mitchell, um, and having read it now, I'm also like, I can see hearkenings back to um, Angela Carter as well. And so in this book, we're following the character of Liv, who is able to traverse through time, through water, but also time is something that doesn't really exist in this book. So sometimes we see Liv as an older character, sometimes she's a young girl again, um, and she meets characters from their past and their, you know, their past, their present and the future. And um, there is so much within this book to do with, like, the Statue of Liberty is a big thing within this book because it's talking about liberty, but it's the fact that the people who are creating, it's basically the Statue of Liberty is made on the backs of slaves is what Yuknovich is getting at in here. And how the people who are building the Statue of Liberty, there are a lot of black people there who are then being maligned by the communities as well, and they're having their rights stripped away from them. So it's like the almost um, juxtaposition between the fact that they're making this statue and it's actually, they aren't free at all. And then you also get to see so you know we get talk of child labor and we get that linked to stuff going on in the modern day and it's the way that this book almost moves in waves you know there's a lot going on with water there's and that's how this book feels like you just move from one character into the other and it's not a lot you're wondering how this happened. yeah that's it it's, you can see where the author has really been inspired by that and I like this idea that there was no time. Yes, it's an incredibly weird book. And I think that that's why it appeals to me. And it is, there's no, there's no lin linearity to this book at all. It um, moves here, there, and everywhere. Characters from the past suddenly turn up in the present and they are all over the place. And the, there's like stuff going on scientifically. And basically what the author is saying to you is, She's asking you as the reader to throw out every single thing you know about reality, every single thing you know about science and what's been proven to you and saying, actually, no, humanity is all wrong. Here is this book. Um, why can't a turtle talk? You know, why can't um, human bodies regrow themselves? Um, why does death have to be the end? That sort of thing. You have to absolutely, you just have to throw everything out of the window because this is going to get metaphysical, it's going to get surreal, and it's going to be in the past, future, and present all at the same time. And it was just, to me, brilliant. It was too, right. So this is where I can say, I've DNF'd this this morning. And I knew you would. <laughs> I knew you would. And, right, it's because, right, so everything you say is amazing, and I, I completely love all of that that is so like like I'm so pleased that you love this book I'm 100% pleased it's just too much for me it was... yeah, I knew it would be when I was reading it I was like this is a me book it's not a Charlie book it's just like there's it's just like yeah. so much packed in and I'm like I feel like I feel like it's always like panic inducing to me because I'm like yeah. I'm like I can't 
Like, I feel like I'm drowning under those metaphoric waves, whereas you are, like, surfing on the top. And I'm yeah. like... Like, um, I think if you'd got to the second part and you'd started reading about Aurora and you'd started reading about the child labour in the in a, the 18th century America, I think that that would have done something for you. Yeah, can uh, I, I, mean, I, can, I can, can, can keep looking, well, I can go look at it. Maybe I should, what I should do is I should park it and go back to it when I'm in the right kind of fantasy yeah, kind of mood. Yeah, you definitely have to be in the mood for something surreal because I like, let me just see whether this, I, I don't think this quote's going to do anything for you now. It doesn't spoil it in any way. Um, but it was to, um, this was just to do with the Statue of Liberty and throughout the whole thing, you've got the idea that the- you finished it already. you finished this book already. I, I ended up just um, reading it. Like I, I was at page 130 last night and I read 200 pages in one sitting because I got into it that well. Um, like it's one of those books where I didn't expect them to be quotable pieces, but then, like I say, there's this whole thing about the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, and then I, I th well, this I thought this might be the thing that got you, but obviously, if you're not going to, it, basically, it's just about what I was saying with the juxtaposition between the Statue of Liberty and the people who actually. I love that. It. Like that sounds amazing. Like seriously, I need so, to read a historical fiction about that rather than a fantasy kind of. I think that's the case. Yeah. Um, but I'll just read this because I um, I was going to read it to you anyway, and with you saying that, it just reminded me. The day her body became a freestanding statue, a joy got into all of us, but so did a sadness. Looking up at this body we'd built with our hands and arms and legs and sweat and hearts, it opened up our throats a bit, stretched and stiffened our spines. Seeing her gaze out across the water made our chests open up as if that was something hearts could do as if you could just open your arms to the universe and sky and tilt your head up and open your mouth, and suddenly your heart would be something more than a muscled-up fist pumping in your chest, as if the beating of all our hearts might be something different than the life of one person. And then it goes on to just further talk about the fact that these people were slowly having the realisation as to their, how they were viewed in society and their worth and... And that sounds amazing. It does sound from amazing. The, from the beginning, they thought they were really contributing something. And just the the way that things change with the statue of the building, because they don't want to upset the people in the South, and you know, the South of America who um, didn't want slavery abolished. And, Honestly, I feel like I will have to get back to it, but I will um, have to, I'll have to be in the mood for it. So um, that's a thing to be noted. Even if you um, don't read any more of the book, um, you said it. Do read the final two pages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, and I'm gonna. I know I will. I will read. I'm gonna. I will just. I just need to. Know, it I, I I like that. That's how this video's gone. I like that. Um, you really liked Great Circle, and I was disappointed by it. I really like Thrust. You DNF'd it. I feel like th this. It's a full circle moment for the both of us. <laughs> the, yeah. and it, it shows so we say that is how we'll end it this video exactly um perfect yeah that was the recap. you got any last words to say to everyone um no just thank you for having me and um i hope that people have enjoyed this video and do, you know like getting to record with charlie again it's almost like it's like christmas day came early thank you so much <laughs> you're such a liar though he's such a liar you should see the things he said <laughs> <laughs> he's so smarmy he's a grumpy man <laughs> he doesn't mean that um, yeah um, so yeah everybody uh, uh, say some what should we get them to write in the comments below um what book would they like you and i to read next together to determine what <laughs> who likes and who our hates friendship. it our yeah. next friendship test yeah our next friendship test because great circle and thrust fails <laughs> We need to try and find. Do you know what though? We had in memoriam that we didn't even like plan. You know, I was just gonna. I was just gonna mention in memoriam. In memoriam trespasses. Yeah, they were both two books this year. We both loved. So yeah, then we kind of like yeah. actually. Anyway, but anyway, yeah. So let us know. From the Charlie and Charlie um, top ten list. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. The two books that we agreed on. <laughs> you got. You guys recommend ones that you think we'll both like in the comments below. That's a good plan. And um, we're also going to be recording at some point um, a book video. So I'll link that in the description. Take care and send you guys lots yeah. of love. Goodbye. Bye -bye.